morning, everyone, friends. I'm very honored to have a very special person. Um, it will be Sarah Allen. She just finished her doctor degree in Chinese medicine and acupuncture, and she specializes in, in integration medicine. We were very happy to have us as uh, she actually studied as well. Uh, plus, she does massages. She is the all the bomb you can have in one place. <laughs> Uh, it's a dream of everybody wants to have a treatment with her and she's not just that she does triathlete she does she loves to hike and we go more discuss about her personal life too that'd be great and Sarah thank you so much to be here with us it's so honored and I'm John Cooney here for an art of feeling and Sarah Ellen is does she is in Oregon right yes I'm in Bend Oregon Yes. It's a very um, mecca for outdoor enthusiasts. <laughs> but thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's truly an honor, John. Yes, uh, we discussed before, and I was totally uh, love the hard concept of life, love how you you deal with the daily things, um, and you're very uh, outgoing. Love the nature. Love to eat well and give a lot of, uh, um, I, mean, I think your purpose in life is pretty good. To yeah, help well, thank people, you. Right? Yes, yeah, I love um, natural living and being in nature and yes, and, and um, eating well is really important to me. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and, and it's my dream to bring her to work with us, but at the same time, each <laughs> one has her own journey. And well, maybe in life one day happens, but however, um, the best thing is we don't need to have everybody in one place. I think we can have a mutual respect in even long distance. Uh, and we can have a, a good uh, sources of learning uh, from each other. And I think this is the thing. It's all about this uh, podcast over here, uh, YouTube and everything here to people realize that we can learn so much from each other. And this is why we are here for it. Um, Sarah, tell a little bit about you, how we started, and I know you have a lot of pinpoints in life, you change a lot of things, and look like it was so devastating for you, but same time was, was same time it was helping you to be a, a better person, and that's who you are today. Yes, um, well, I, I was a teacher um, prior to um, my journey and to being a medical practitioner, I was a teacher for 15 years, and I taught English as a second language and bilingual education. I taught um, for about 10 years in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and West Dallas, Wisconsin. And I was working with children and families from all over the world. And I also taught overseas. I taught in South Korea, Brazil. Uh, I did a Fulbright in Colombia, South America. And so I'm, I'm very much in love with other cultures and traveling and it, it, it is and it was and it still is a huge part of my life. Um, but back at that time, when I was in my early 20s, you know, this is almost 18 years ago or so now, I, I started experiencing um, strange aches and pains. And, you know, I was a triathlete, so I was a pretty competitive age group triathlete at the time. And I would always be getting tendonitis, all these itis issues, tendonitis, bursitis, myositis. And I didn't know what was really going on with my body. Uh, I was seeing physical therapists, um, massage therapists, trying to manage the pain. And I started feeling like I was a hypochondriac because I had so much pain. And, you know, and I grew up on a dairy farm in Minnesota and I have a very high pain tolerance and a very strong work ethic because of my upbringing. So I thought, well, I can't be, I, I thought I was becoming a hypochondriac, but I thought, no, that doesn't make sense. Here I am an athlete, I'm a farm girl. I can take a lot of pain, um, but was what was strange was I was getting these bilateral um, pain in both hands and feet. And so that's what didn't really make sense. So for example, when I got out of bed, it would really hurt to walk. I could barely walk. It felt like I was 90 years old or my, if my hands, you know, when I was trying to write on the chalkboard, I just didn't have the strength and it hurt so bad just to close my fists or to wash dishes. It felt like my hands and feet were broken. And so finally, my physical therapist recommended I see um, a doctor to 
to, to rule out if there was something systemic in my body. And so I started seeing um, various doctors and it took a long time and nobody could figure it out. You know, and I saw hand surgeons, podiatrists, sports medicine doctors. Um, it finally, I saw a rheumatologist and, you know, this took several years and it was frustrating to go to doctor after doctor. And I know a lot of people have experienced that where they just can't find the answer to some strange pain or, or illness. Um, and that's what I went through. And then I finally saw a rheumatologist who confirmed that I had rheumatoid arthritis and he did it via x-ray. So there was there, they found bilateral erosions on my, my small toes. And it looked like an apple had been gnawed away by an insect. And, um, you know, and that was devastating. Cause like I said, I was young. I was at that time, by that time they figured it out, I think I was 31 years old. And he said, I would never run again. And, you know, that was like a death sentence. Uh, he said I would be on methotrexate, which is a chemotherapy drug, um, you know, that is also used to control rheumatoid arthritis. It's, an, it's one of the traditional um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis medications. So I started on that and he told me I would be on medication for the rest of my life. Um, about 50% of the population that has rheumatoid arthritis becomes permanently disabled. And that was also a very startling statistic. And um, I didn't feel good when I took that medication. I started feeling, you know, just, I didn't know if it was in my head, but I felt like somebody that was on chemo, low, low energy, my hair started thinning. Uh, I started feeling nauseous and just general malaise and I didn't feel good. Um, I even went to Mayo Clinic and I saw a head researcher of the disease and she said that that drug, that medication will take 15 to 20 years off your life. And that's pretty scary when you're young and you, you know, I had a very positive outlook on life and I, I, I wanted to live forever. <laughs> you know, I wanted to and be healthy forever. So, and I didn't even think that my health was poor, you know, like I had said, I was an athlete and I, I felt that, um, I felt in pretty good health prior to this. So, you know, it, lo and behold, it took me on this track of um, my physical therapist, who's Tom Labish in Milwaukee. He was so great. And he said, you know, there's a lot of ways you can control this illness naturally. So I started reading all I could um, about, about the disease. And it led me to Dr. Mercola, um, who is a very famous doctor. He's not even treating patients, but he was treating patients in Chicago. And I was able to see him and he, he said, this, this is easy. You can fix this disease. You just have to change your diet. And he was so confident and he was, he was, he made me believe that this is possible. And so, um, in short, I developed a very strong, you know, very strict, it was extremely strict regimen for my diet. And I was able to, to change the disease, you know, my, in a couple of weeks of following my protocol, I, I was, my pain was diminishing. I felt lighter. My skin was glowing. I felt younger and, and it was fantastic. And then it, it took, it took a couple of years to fully put it into remission, but I just, um, stuck with it. I was so afraid of the detrimental effects of that medication and of being disabled one day that I was willing to do anything. So I juiced, excessively, you know, I juiced about 48 ounces of vegetable juice every single day. I eliminated a lot of foods that causes inflammation. I added a lot of foods to um, improve my nutritional, improve the nutritional value of what I was eating. So everything I ate or did not eat, it really had a purpose and it served as medicine. And it's what led me to changing my career ultimately and in, in doing what I'm doing. And that's it. I was so inspired once I beat the disease that I you know, I actually went back to running um, and I was able to win a triathlon you know, after being told I would never run again, which I had never even done that before. So it, it was like I was in the most, the best health of my, in my life. This is a pretty this powerful, powerful thing you said is, said is sometimes we we think we are have the best health and all the stuff and and it comes in life there's little bumps and mm -hmm. actually improve your life you look like it's got worse and actually make you wake up and say hey i can do better than this and right. you, you think like okay we are, i do triathlete i do this and that or some people just like oh i'm totally healthy 
But if you look inside and say, wow, some things need to be modified. And some people live like that for a long time. I don't want to judge anybody, but I think it's, it's just a good reflection we have. I think I see what you saw that with the rheumatoid arthritis, mean you improve your lifestyle, better nutrition and this and that. Even you're doing better, but I can't, what I can't do better. I think people listen this, uh, this uh, listen us now. I think you can change right now whatever you have, right? Right. And uh, one thing is I find out uh, a year ago, I have called steatos, whereas in the liver, have a fat liver. Even like, oh, you're skinny. You have this and you look so good. And I, I do triathlon too. Then I asked the doctor, say, what I should do? Say, somebody, oh, you can take some medication, but all the option you can do is, is to watch what you eat. And I say, well, I was eating a lot of nuts and eating a lot of carbs and things like that. Even though I think I was doing healthy things, but anything mm-hmm. eating more than you should actually start hurting your liver. And that's exactly what happened with me. And I changed my way and like or not, I don't need to lose a lot of weight, but I lost a lot of weight just made this process. And I was thinking, you know what? It's just a lifestyle, it's a habit you can do to improve yourself. And tell me a little bit about that. What kind of lifestyle you're bringing right now that you make like the better person? Because you just don't, I believe it didn't just change your diet. Because nutrition is very crucial for you for this point. But what else you did to yourself that to say, you start reflect because you are acupuncturist that you talk about meridians, talk about energy. You do a lot of healing by touch as well with massage and you do integration medicine with that. Tell me the whole holistic way, how you approach to yourself to be a better and psychologically your soul, your mind and everything. Right. Um, well, one of the things too that I implemented and I still implement is I think that stress has a huge impact on diet. You know, I've always been kind of a quintessential overachiever. And I think because I grew up on a farm, I always felt like I had this work ethic. You know, I've seen that modeled in my life where you have this unstoppable work ethic and then you, you have to push your body beyond its limits. And I think um, being honest with myself and realizing that my body does have limits and incorporating more rest was really imperative in, in recovery. Um, and so making that, that important um, important into my life. And so I practiced emotional freedom technique. And if you, if you know what that is, where you're, you're um, doing, you know, you're tapping on energetic <laughs> acupuncture points. And I was trained to do that. I, I help my patients do that as well. And I utilize that sometimes um, for my own self and getting regular acupuncture. You know, I didn't know when I was sick, I didn't have acupuncture until I lived in Brazil. And that's where I was introduced to acupuncture. And I realized that wow, it how it could improve my immune system and my overall mental health, and I loved it so much that I decided ultimately to um, become a Chinese medicine practitioner, and I get that regularly in order to to maintain my health and wellness. And then the you know the part one of the pillars of Chinese medicine is herbs, and so I also feel that that is an important um, adjunct to nutrition. Is herbs have this incredible medical ability. Um, and then meditation. I also feel that, you know, when I see this after treating patients, that a lot of people that are chronically ill, it's very easy to become tied to your disease or become, you know, identify like this is who I am. I am rheumatoid arthritis. I am MS or whatever, that it's such a big part of your life. It becomes part of you. And when you do that and you don't realize, I think the power of belief is so strong, um, whether it's negative or positive, but believing that you are going to be sick forever is going to make you sick forever if you believe you're going to be well and i think when i was young and i cured myself of rheumatoid arthritis or put it into permanent remission i really believe that i could beat it and i think that power of belief um, gives you the determination and if you don't have that it you know it's hard to explain that energetically but i believe that positive attitude um and faith and prayer or whatever someone believes in um is very very important to to healing and also to well-being. I think this this you got the point that is very important. Whatever your belief system is, religion or spirituality or anything would uh, lead 
to whatever you you'll be a better human being it's totally is necessary a lot of people is just looking for quick answer we are in a society today that we need quick fix um Tell me a little bit about your journey, about the, the people who wants to do everything in, uh, in very short fix, that we, we, life is journey. Right, I, I feel that, that that is something that really needs to be addressed. Um, you know, you see a lot of it just in advertisements, oh, like the 15 day diet of this or that, and that you can fix something really quickly. And then once you do that, you don't have to go back to it. And I, I feel that that's um, dangerous. I mean, if you think about how long people don't become instantly ill, you know, your illness manifests for years, you know, whatever, whatever I had, whatever caused it, what if it was stress or trauma or, you know, something in my diet, um, that that didn't just happen in a week. So you can't fix something in a week. <laughs> right. So I think that you think about your health, it's a constant constant journey and your whatever you're putting into your system with whatever kind of toxicity it, there is, is going to build up over time. And you have to work just as long or longer to get rid of that. And also, um, you know, our world, our modern world today is, is changed. You know, we have so much more toxicity, much, there are so many more toxins and there's so much more stress. And um, I feel that import in order to stay well, you have to you have to, it's a continual battle with it actually. And, and once you change your lifestyle, it's not really that difficult. You know, it just becomes your life. And I don't think of it as being, oh, this extra burden that I'm on this diet. It's just a very positive lifestyle. And when you start feeling well, you want to do more things to make yourself well. And it just breathes and it, <laughs> and it grows. Very, very good point. Yeah. Let me bring something that I think is a good, uh, uh, Metaphor. I have this wonderful bonsai called Fuki and oh, Tea. <laughs> yes, somebody gave my birthday. Oh, and happy birthday. It's a, it's a, <laughs> thank you. That was quite a while. I was in the second sky. Uh, no, it wasn't my birthday, sorry. For, uh, there's a memorandum for my mother who passed away uh, three and a half months ago. And oh, somebody so gave sorry. me to me, it represents life. Yes, it represents life. And I think this is pretty much, this is our life. I was uh, doing some research about it, how to take care of bonsai, because bonsai, you need to have a lot of love and care, how to prune, when the best time to prune, and then when do you you supposed to give water and all this? This is like anything else in life. And I say I whatever two or three days. And I did a lot of YouTube about how we I pruned this beautiful bonsai, it's a small tree. However, yeah. uh, I think this is pretty much represent our life. Why? Because if you start cutting too soon the branches, they eventually they die in a year, less than a year. I was research about it. Wow. How you cut it, what the angles, right? What kind of food you should give, how much water you give, and how much sun. And this is a represent our life. You think about it. Right. If, uh, if, you, if you do too much in one thing, you're exaggerating too much water, they go die because it's being exacerbated. And same thing about us, we do too much one things that you, you like grow up thinking about, oh, I need to work really hard because I grew up on a farm and I need to work as hard as I can until I cannot take the pain anymore. However, I think that I try to represent this autoimmune system problems that I work into things that can go anywhere. And I say, okay, let me think about that. What's what I need for necessary things? Then you start doing some research about yourself. And this is a, this is a entice me. How much people bring insight to you say, I'm having so much stress in my life. I have this and that. And absolutely. But how we make a piece about, because stress doesn't go away. Every day you have is some things going on. Like we are walking, inflammation. Everybody thinks inflammation is our enemy. Actually it's our 
friends if we know how to do it. If you're walking, you inflame yourself because that's your system, how it works to process. It's a healing. Of course, if you exacerbate it, if you do something, the body say you need to stop. I think this is the thing. And I think same thing about what are you telling us that you are so overwhelmed in doing this and that, the stress above that what you should handle it. I think this is the thing is really change yourself. And tell me about what you do for daily routine for people to understand what you do for to, to us. I, I think for me is amazing what is about what you do in the morning, what you have in the breakfast, then what you do if you have time to meditate or you, you have time to pray or whatever you do. And why I think is fascinating because I like to see people routine because everybody wants to be fixed right away, but you don't change your, your, your daily life. And I think this is things that are most important to have educate yourself. Some things is not good for you. Don't agree to eat some few things. You should not eat because that's the things you should. And the same thing is about routine. Bad habits can transform in good habits and good habits can be changed to bad habits. And the same thing about ourselves. Could you give a little bit of direction for us that way? Sure, of course. Oh, by the way, I loved the metaphor of your bonsai tree. <laughs> I've always been fascinated with bonsai trees, but I think that was, uh, that was so spot on. <laughs> um, that was wonderful. And um, my condolences to, your, to you about your mother. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, but I, I agree with you, John, that the lifestyle and just incorporating good positive habits is really, really important. And um, I should mention that, you know, when I was a teacher, I was working with English as a second language learners and they were high school students at the time. And a lot of them had grandiose dreams of, I'm gonna become a lawyer, Miss Allen, or I'm gonna become a professional boxer. I'm gonna, I want to be a doctor. And truthfully, some of my students were very, they were struggling students. They were, going, they were not gonna make it in high school. They were gonna potentially fail. And they thought in four years, they were gonna have a, a graduate, you know, college degree or in six years, they were gonna be a, a, a lawyer. And so I had to spell it out to them, you know, realistically, listen, you're getting Fs right now. You're, not, you're maybe not gonna graduate. How do you think you're gonna become a lawyer? You know, what, what do you think you need to get from A to Z? And so we started um, following um, Stephen Covey's work, the seven habits of highly effective people. And they have that for teenagers. And I would sit down and I would do it with them. And we would make like a bulletin board of stars. Um, and they all put their pictures in up, up, up there and that they, were, that they were stars. And they put down their dream of what their ultimate dream was. And then we started every Monday morning, you know, we started the goal setting of what they wanted to accomplish and how they wanted to have balance in their life. You know, so, you know, you have one of your goals is your your personal professional goals and another goal is your relationship goals or your family goals or your spiritual goals you know you can set your own goals but to to have a very balanced life so i think i have incorporated that into my own life because i did it with my students for so long and i saw that we they started really making successes small successes and then we would celebrate those successes so i i um try to start the day with some positive mindset and goal setting for the day, just of what I want to accomplish with the idea that I want to be a better person or make the, and make the world a better place. Um, I also have an infrared sauna. <laughs> so I sit in that in the morning sometimes to start the day. I feel like it gets rid of the toxicity and it, I just start feeling really fresh and purified. Um, I still have the same juicer that I've had since it's the Omega juicer. I've had it <laughs> since 2003, I think. Um, and I juice vegetables every single morning. And it's nice if I have the time, I like to get out and walk or run on it. I live on a nature trail by my house. And I think just getting the fresh sunlight into my eyes and um, being able to run before I start the day puts me in a good mindset. And uh, that's, that's how I start, try to start every day. And I feel the meditation and even ending the day with meditation and starting it. I remember what I wanted my job in um, Oregon that I had. I worked at a, a real busy acupuncture clinic and I wanted to live out West. I really love nature. So I wanted to be in the mountains and I wanted a good job and I wanted to help people. So I, I, I meditated on that every single morning and every single night. And I just put that intention out there that that was going to happen. And it, and it ultimately did, you know, and it was something I, I never had really focused on one 
thing that I wanted like that. And so, you know, you, you hear about that, the positive outcome of manifestation of, um, of, you know, visualizing and, and, and how that could really happen, make it happen in, in reality. Yeah, this is one of the things uh, you said was very important. Nature is really healing us. It's uh, like you said, you walk on the nature. I was a, but I was just came back from California and I was walking, hiking one day, say, I go hike a little bit for three, three miles and end up hiking nine miles. Oh, wow. And it was, at, and I was, was such a healing. And I think one of the things I try to make this journey every day, I think that helps a lot of this habit is say, say today I, I'm grateful, grateful for what, right? Then you write down that. That's how you start the morning. And top beliefs, what are you going to do today? In my important list for today, then after that, there comes a potential roadblock that my face today and how I can resolve my strategy for today. And after that, how successful was my day after I finished? I think those things would be really life change because you make those habits and you really, mm -hmm. what's how I can achieve this? And I was, I was watching how, how the successful people do in life and they have a strategy of the day. It's not like about a year or two, they have that too. But if you don't have a strategy of the day, even your health, your mental, anything, you go through your life and when you see already 60, 70, 80, and you're like, I didn't have anything. And this life go by without, it feels sort of empty. And I think this is the thing we need to have a purpose in life over here, right? And tell me a little bit, what do you be, I ask every single person that I, I interview, what would be your purpose you think for you and your life right now? Oh, you know, it's interesting. I, that's a very good, that's a good question, a hard question. Um, you know, I don't have my own children. You know, I don't have kids. I love kids, but I didn't get married and have kids. And so I always felt like when I realized that, you know, that's probably, I'm probably not going to do that. I always thought, well, maybe I won't have a conventional life, but let me let have an interesting life. And it will also allows me the freedom to help the world in a greater capacity. You know, I can give more of myself because there's more of me to give where I'm not dedicated just to my family. Um, and so helping the world is, is more globally. And I, you know, I, I was raised, like I said, on a farm. My dad is a Buddhist. Um, well, you know, we were raised Catholic, but he was, became a Buddhist. And so he has that Buddhist philosophy. He was a Buddhist, he still is, I guess, you know, for over 30 years. So I, I learned a lot of his philosophy from, from him, just of his teachings. And I feel like while he had such beautiful teachings and, and he never, he should have been a teacher, but he was a farmer. So he didn't really get to spread his word. So I feel, I really love to write and um, I love to, to help people heal. So I feel that, you know, via my writings or the teachings of him um, and things I've learned from my own experiences, I hope to inspire others um, on their own personal journeys in some way. And I don't believe a person can say I'm a healer, but I think people have the ability to help others heal. And, you know, cause ultimately you are the one healing yourself. So I, I'd like to be an impetus for that and, and do it in a, a very holistic way. So I just don't feel like one method of healing is, is great. And I think that's why I've worked so hard on getting different certifications of, you know, being a massage therapist and a clinical nutritionist and an acupuncture that you, once you become adept at what you're doing, you can meld all these skills together and, um, and treat the whole person and, and find the needs of that person, what they need and what their body needs. And you can utilize and meld your skills to help, um, help, help the healing process begin. But I hope that one day, you know, I hope that, um, I'd like to reach people in a more global way to a larger audience as well as, uh, individually and just make the world a little bit nicer. And, you know, we're living in some, difficult, challenging times where there's violence and unhappiness, and there's a lot of um, negative things going on in the world. But if we have a lot of people building positive things, um, we can change that. And just to be a small part of that would be great. 
that was amazing. I appreciate so much for that. I think we're, we need more people like you. Um, <laughs> the purpose of life should be more helping others to make a difference. I, be, I always tell people this, we have a pathway in life. Some people, we walk through this journey in life. Some people leave the dirt. Some leave the trash there. Some people plant flowers. Some people plant trees. Some people take it off the trees. Some people make obstacles to others. And it depends how you go in life. And we just leave those. And we go, this is called past from the yesterday. We stop present right now. And we're just looking forward in the future. However, if, it depends what you're doing right now. It can affect the people coming behind us. And I think that's exactly what I appreciate for people like you, that you want to walk this path to make a difference. Um, and this is the big mission for you, I believe, in your life that's to make people uh, a better human being. Um, tell me about your passion. What's your passion? Can be very quick, 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 quick uh, answers. Okay. I love writing. You know, I fell in love with writing when I was traveling and through Columbia and I started writing and I became a, kind of addicted to writing where I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't stop. But I had to stop for a while because I, I became too addicted to it. So I've always... Uh, that is a passion of mine um, that I try to keep in, in check. And my other passion is traveling, um, especially overseas, international traveling, learning languages. You know, I, I'm fluent in Spanish. Um, I used to be pretty fluent in Portuguese and I love, love, love learning languages because I feel like it opens up a pathway to the world. Once you learn a language, you know, it opens up your ability to connect with all these people from other countries that you wouldn't have otherwise and also the cultural understanding you gain from it. And um, I'm passionate about helping people and I'm passionate about being active. You know, I exercise every single day almost and being in the outdoors and nature. So I think those, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Sarah, your favorite food? My favorite food? What's your favorite food? Oh gosh. It depends on how you qualify food. Like oh. my favorite health food are beets. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but I mean, be donuts. okay, well, pizza, but you're not, you're not, you're, that's not very healthy, but I do, if I had to <laughs> choose but one. doesn't matter, it's a favorite, favorite to favorite, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What, what's your favorite leisure? Excuse me? I'm sorry, I didn't favorite hear Favorite leisure for you. Leisure. Leisure, what do you like to do? Oh, yeah. well, you know, in Oregon, it has become soaking in a hot springs. We have some nice hot springs and there's one hot springs that I love to go to out in the middle of East Oregon, out in the desert and the mountains surrounding it. And if I could go there, I just, I have these noodles, you know, like the noodles <laughs> that you land in a swimming pool and you can bring those. And it's a huge deep pond that gets up to over 104 degrees. And I can just sit out in the middle of that pond um, and uh, do that. My there's oh. so many beautiful lakes here. So just getting on my paddleboard and like staring up at the sky and being in the middle of a lake um, in the hot summer. Like it's, we, we're experiencing a heat wave right now. And that's been my leisure of just getting out for the day and, and being uh, in water. I, I love water. So. Yeah. What's your favorite <laughs> place you've been? My favorite place? Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, I am love, I am in love with Colombia, like for the culture. I think that place I can't shake. Um, Brazil is also amazing. So I'd, I'd say in the Andes in South America, I have to say South America is my favorite place I've ever been that I feel just absolutely in love with. And, and every country in South America has its own, you know, Patagonia, they all have such beauty, but I'm in love with South America. Great, favorite book? Of Mice and Men by George Steinbeck. Okay. Because my dad calls me George and <laughs> I figured out I'm George. <laughs> <laughs> that book because we grew up on a farm and maybe my and brother's Lenny. <laughs> you have any pets? I do not. I love dogs. Dogs are my favorite animal or goats are pretty. I love cows, goats, and dogs, but. Awesome. <laughs> Good. Well, I want to, um, we almost come to the end of here. Can you give me a little bit message for people listening right now to see what's a, uh, what do you want to give to them? If I was me struggling right now with my health, what do you message you want to give to the, to the people listening right now? I think I'd like to impart that 
it's it's important to believe that you can beat your illness and to believe in yourself that your body has the ability to heal and to really embrace that thought and that feeling. Um, it's not just telling yourself that, but really internally believing that you can heal yourself and the body has the power to do that. And once you believe that, you can start doing things in order to, to make that change. And that change does not come immediately. It's something that is a journey and it's something that you work on every single day. And I think like what my father um, taught me when he was, uh, you know, when he, as a Buddhist was just that when you're feeling pain or you're feeling um, discomfort or challenges, that there is, there's actually beauty in that, you know, that there, there's good in that. And it's, it's important to feel the bad as well as the good and not to ignore that because there's lessons to be learned from the bad and, it makes us stronger and there's beautiful moments that come from, from pain and challenges and you never forget those. And it makes you who you are and it makes you more complex and a deeper person. So I think um, people that are struggling and to know that everybody is struggling at some level, some worse than others, but it's, it's part of the human condition and what makes us beautiful as humans and that you can do it. <laughs> As they say in Spanish, si se puede, oh which means this, you can. This is so true. Um, I spoke with a Dr. Kaneko now they one of the top acupuncturists here in the, in the country. And I, he, asked, he said, pain is inevitable, but suffering is your choice. And I was like, say, I was like, I don't agree much, but at the same time, I was like, then I started reflecting, yes, we everybody go through some pain in your life. But how you deal with your pain is different. And you can through you have some problem in relationship, but if that's a painful for you, but you can suffer that or you can resolve that. I think it's, that's the choice we have. I think same thing about illness or the pain you have yourself right now. And you, some people can make you know, the best of it. Make a rheumatoid arthritis, make your friend. Make it the best change. And I think this was a great message. I like to have more interview with you because that was so amazing. I appreciate oh. so much. Uh, how I'd love to talk anytime. I, it's really a, a great honor. Yes. Tell me how people can be in touch with you if they want to have some consultation by phone or they want to visit. How they yes, can do um, that. I am working. I have an online. Well, I, I'm physically practicing in Bend, Oregon, um, but I do have an online um, business as well. So, and I do have a website, it's sarahallen.net. So www.sarahallen.net. Uh, people can also email me, it's at, uh, very similar to, it's info at sarahallen.net. And- um, Awesome. Yes. <laughs> I, it's so much, almost so much fun. Uh, I learned oh, a lot too. You. Yes. And I, I believe the people uh listen to this i hope you get as much information i did it for your life and i hope we can do at least once a month this thing i think it'll be great i think we can uh, help so many people it was so easy because what happens we we want to understand all the people inside like i and they started much more what do you think and i make a difference and don't give up in things that we think is Oh, this is a permanent illness and actually make can make it better maybe it doesn't have a cure but same time you can improve right 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 you can improve yes thank you yeah, sarah you know, and i hope we yes i i believe this is a great message <laughs> and i appreciate so much oh i appreciate you john and i know you have such a very similar philosophy so it, it was really uh great to be able to to collaborate and share together today. Thank you. Thank you.